Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to our War in the East Stalingrad to Berlin Let's Play uh, series. This is episode 16, and in this episode we're going to be executing the air phase of turn 9 and the first half of the ground uh, action phase of turn 9. And um, we're, we're going to, to do a bit of a recap probably of where our strategy sits after the, the last episode as well, because the, the theme of the day is supply 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 and how do we not um, overextend our forces yet still where possible take advantage of gaps in the german line so what we're going to do is begin as we always do in looking at the weather situation to then dictate what are we going to do with our air armies we go info screens and the weather which is also shortcut w key and we see here that the air weather is blizzard, blizzard, blizzard. This um, kind of gray here. When we look at the ground, this is useful when we're considering our ground movement phase. It looks like pretty much everything from Smolensk and south is actually heavy snow. And up near Leningrad, it's just snow. So it's a tough situation on the ground as well. When we look at the forecast, we see that it stays pretty much the same situation on the ground. But in the air, this blizzard here is getting a little smaller. It still covers almost the entirety of our front line. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that by turn 11, so not next turn, but the turn following, that this is all gone. And we can finally get into the air execution phase and do some detail around that. But it's, it's not this episode, sadly. So with that, I've actually gone and off camera uh, done our usual process of trying to get our air armies to rest, to kind of stand down a little right and not, not suffer unnecessary casualties flying in the middle of a blizzard. Um, what I also did is, oh, sorry, not that one, the um, air doctrines tab. I've gone through and I've set minimum weather conditions for a number of these air directives to fair. Normally the AI will keep these set to poor, meaning the weather needs to be, they'll, they'll still fly even in poor weather. Here, fair, I think this is going to help us a little bit in making sure that we're not losing too many operational losses of airframes um, to poor weather conditions. I also went to recon and I just overrode their schedule to not fly at all while we have this blizzard. It, we just don't get much from flying the recon, especially when we're now looking at it going, okay, we're not going to be as aggressive with advancing up the front lines. And there's not a need to necessarily throw away these recon units. Even if we only lose 20 or 50 each turn, it's just, we're, we're not getting anything back from it. So here I changed the, um, the schedule to just kind of hopefully eliminate them from running anything even with the AI assist on. And then air superiority, we also changed all these to being minimum weather conditions of fair. So hopefully that helps quite a bit. Uh, already made all those changes on the air army, so we're gonna go ahead and execute the air directives. And this should go pretty fast considering we shouldn't be flying anything if I got that all right. We're on day one. Night two. So it looks like I did because by now normally our recon would be flying on the first day of the week and it hasn't. So it doesn't look like we're going to lose any airframes in this air execution phase, which I'm really excited about. Um, because we also have been suffering a couple hundred airframe losses each turn. Um, and our net changes in order of battle continue to be outpaced by the reinforcements the Germans are bringing in terms of their air force. And we need to, as much as possible, keep a numerical advantage. So, no losses, no air directives, everything stayed just as it was, no sorties were run. So now we get to the ground movement phase. And we'll begin up in Leningrad, as we always do. And there were only two areas on the front line in which the Germans in the last turn executed any counterattacks. The first was a couple up here in Leningrad, the second was a wave of attacks down by Smolensk. So let's take a look at what they did in Leningrad. If you recall from the previous turn, and two turns, we had cut off um, 
east to west this row of hexes from Leningrad back to our rear. And that had isolated two units up here to the north that were trying to maintain the encirclement of Leningrad. So we'd broken through and we had established this line. And in the previous turn, we repelled counterattacks and managed to knock out one of the divisions that was up here, take their hex. So now it's just left here. The Germans decided to counterattack again, and the first was right here, where they sent the 69th and the 102nd Infantry Division, and the um, 26th Corps uh, against our 42nd Army, which consisted of the 189th Rifle Division and the 86th Rifle Division from the 67th Army. And when we look here at the details, we see that most of the losses were in infantry. Uh, in terms of rifle squads that the Germans lost, and then the same for us, lost 27 rifle squads. And then there was a, a number of losses for us in terms of anti-tank rifles, and we also lost some mortars and support units. The Germans lost one of their Stug 3s, um, and then they also lost, it looks like, couple of 75, well no, it's just one 75 pack 40 and 50 pack 38s they lost eight of. So what's a little interesting is going into the war, kind of the Germans standard field piece for anti-tank uh, maneuvers was the, the 50 millimeter pack 38. That was probably most common numerically and even into 42 it probably was as well. But what they quickly found was against the Soviet KV-1s and KV-2s specifically, it, it did nothing just it, it had no effect and that was a great surprise to the germans so the the ones that we really need to consider are these 75 millimeter pack 40s they pose the greatest threat to our armor um and then of course the infamous 88s that were converted to be used in anti-tank warfare so we successfully held the line there we also had uh this battle where we held the line and again similar story they lost 1,100 men, we lost 1,400, 26 to 19 gun platforms, um, and, and we did all right. So that went pretty well. What we're going to do now is see if we can't actually eliminate this unit here. And to do that, we'll take all these units that I've selected, and that's two to one. We're going to give this a try. And it looks like they held. They held at 225 range. Let's take a look here. So their morale, not their morale, excuse me, I keep saying that, their fatigue levels aren't too high. Their combat preparation points, though, are pretty low. Don't know if we have enough to do it again. 2.5 to 5.3, so it's probably not going to be worth it there. So let's take this stack here, and we're going to move them up. Their fatigue is fine. Combat preparation is low. That's okay. Um, and they're going to be defending there. We're then going to take this stack, except for the construction brigade, which I didn't notice was there. We're going to take these two units and see if we can't make another attack on these guys. And they held again. Well, gosh darn it. So the question is, do we stand any chance with these five units to attack here? No, we're not going to make it. So given that, I think we are going to take this stack. We're going to try attacking them again. This is three to one. Okay, I'll admit, I thought that one was going to break them. So I am, I am a little surprised by that. Let's move up this 198th Rifle Division. And... Let's just try this again. They... What the heck? Did I miss something? Yeah, their fortification level is a 1. So they have successfully defended and held off four attacks completely encircled. That doesn't make much sense to me. But okay. That, that is what it is, I guess. Um, over here, I still don't think we have, we're not in any type of position to counterattack. 
especially considering that the Totenkopf SS Panzer Grenadier Division is here. Um, that, that really does worry me and is going to keep me from being too terribly aggressive on this line. We'll see if we can't break through here. Just, oh, excuse me. Misclick there. Just because we have them so overwhelmed on the front and now it's 21 to 15. So I think given that, we're going to go through and just make sure there's not any units that are really worthwhile to get off the front line to, to give a bit of a rest to. And I think what we will do is, actually we've used up the movement points on a number of these, so I don't think we'll be able to. So we're, we're not going to be able to move back anything up here. This unit is still lowering their fatigue and building up their combat preparation, same there. These guys are fine, these are fine. Uh, 71st is a little high, but it's not too bad. So we're going to leave those on the front line. Our fortification levels are still all at 1. Once these get up to 2, that's going to be very helpful to us. And down here... I mean, we can maybe break through here. There's no fortification there. Is it worth bringing you up? You have no fatigue. I think it is. Let's try to attack. No. No, we're, we're not going to. Because they have the 6th Panzer Division right here. And here they have the 8th. We're, we're just going to hold the line, guys. It's... We, we, we don't need to be so aggressive when they are so well dug in. And again, if we go back to our strategy, our strategy is not to break through here, right? Our strategy is to break through right here, right? This hex particularly when possible, but to do that first we'll need to move into this hex. But our strategy is to put pressure and do a little bit of breaking through here. And the main thrust is going to come right here south of Lake Hillman. This is where we will really focus our efforts on. I am going to really try to this turn, though, finish off these units if we have any chance at all. 48 to say. It's just not good enough to do that. And I bet if we look through these, some of these are pretty high on fatigue. They're, they're actually a little better than I thought they were. But we're, we're just going to keep holding the line there. Again, we, we have time on our side. If this was like on a rail line or something like that, I'd probably care a lot more. But we're, we're just going to continue to hold them and keep them isolated there. So then the question is, can we take back this hex? Oh, this famous hex that we have tried to take so many times. What? And actually, to be fair, we have taken it many times. We just keep getting knocked out. Um... What we're going to do is, if you remember correctly, we had brought up the 30th Army from the Southern Smolensk Front to come over and help with this attack here. We're actually going to take all of these units of the 11th Army. And we're going to move them back here, I think. And then... We take these... Yeah, we're going to move all of these units back as well. So now we have fresh forces on the front line here. Look at that. So now when we look at this attack, we're doing 38.9 to 8.7. Yes, please. They retreated. Right? Now that... That is a victory. I don't think we have enough to move into that hex because we'd spent the movement points to move them up, but that, that's fine. That's not a problem. Um, the important part is that, once again, right, this rail junction, north-south, we have our zone of control. We've taken that hex. Even though we are not in the hex, right, we are there. Um, we might actually look and see... them down to one 
when it really kind of exhausts them, right? Don't know if we're going to do that. So we move this unit up, which is part of the 30th Army. Back here, this is the 30th Army HQ. And we're going to take... Don't... Don't know if I want to take the brigade there. So I think we're going to leave the brigade behind, but we're going to take these two rifle divisions. We're going to move them up into that hex. And then we'll take the 274th rifle division and also move them there. So that is a pretty strong defensive position um, with some well-rested and fit units to try to hold off any type of counterattack. And I think we might actually even counterattack against this unit. What do we do it here? No, I think we go for the easy victory. Nope, don't have enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, this pocket's a no-go. We broke through. Mission accomplished here. Um, the important part is if we can hold this hex now, next turn it gives us an opportunity to maybe break through one more hex. And if we can widen this front, we have a huge numerical advantage now that the 30th Army has arrived where we can simply overwhelm their forces. And I think that will then force them to say, okay, do they maybe move things like the LAH SS Panzer Grenadier Division down south to help reinforce it? And if they do, then does that create an opening for the 59th Army to push over? If they don't, then we can just keep pushing with the 30th Army. And kind of one of the first keys is going to be is if we can make our way here to Sotsi. Sotsi, excuse me. It, because if we can, this is one more north-south line that is completely interrupting their flow of supplies. Um, and it's a mere one, two, three, four hexes away. So two turns, it's realistic we might get there. Especially since these reinforcements have come. And then again, once we have widened the front line, right, which really the Germans have an advantage by being able to defend with Lake Ilmen here, it decreases the width of their line. Once we have widened the front line and we have taken care of this pocket, we have two more armies here, which then means just in this little pocket, we're going to have four armies worth of units pushing to the west. Um, something that the Germans probably aren't going to be able to handle. Their greatest asset and strength is going to be that they have some divisions here that are just so strong, so well rested, that they'll cause us serious issues. Um, if we're trying to attack where they are on the line. So we have to try to work around them, right? To have a nimble and flexible front line. All of these hexes here, they're pretty, they're pretty defensive. We look at fortification level, they haven't built up yet. Um, but given the supply situation, right, of some of these units, we're, we're not going to make any type of push on any of these. So we're just going to stay as is. And especially like I look here at the 53rd Army, right? It's, it's a little weak, just these three holding here. But then again, they really don't have too much on this line. What did happen during the Germans' ground movement phase is they retreated a number of units here and down here. Um, which I, I think is overall pretty good news for us. I think we might take all nine of these units and we might push out this unit. We have fortification level one, so let's do that. They retreat it. So good news. I think we'll move up the second motorized. Then I think we will take it's a rifle brigade, so I'm not too excited about that. What else could we move up there? Maybe we don't move anything there. This unit was on refit, but they are now full combat preparation and no fatigue. So we're going to move them to ready status. And we're going to move them up to the front line here. Okay, excellent. That works out quite well. I skipped ahead down here. I, I completely skipped past what the 39th Army might want to do. Um... I think we're going to take this stack in advance there. And then we're going to take this stack 
And we're also going to advance. Okay, this is making sense a little. Let's see if we take this stack, if we attack here. Three to one, let's do it. They route it. That's good news. The Sturm Brigade route it. Now we're going to move this stack up. So we're continuing to evolve where our front line is here. Right. Move you a little further east. Okay. This is, this is going to start putting a lot of pressure on them. And when we can capture some of these juncture towns, that'll have a very measurable impact to their, to their supply situation. Sorry, zooming in glitched out a little there. Back here we also have this guards division, which I think it's probably about time that we can move them up on the front line. They're part of the third shock army, so we're probably going to keep them here. And they can be part of the attack on these HQ units and such. Do we have enough to... We don't. We don't have enough to make any substantial push there. These two units... Um, fatigue's not that bad. This one's supply is pretty bad, though. Looking at how we want to advance here, I think what we might do is we might take this stack of the 5th Army, move them here. I think we might attack here, 2 to 1. They retreat it. Okay. Then this unit we're going to move up. And we will also move up the 360th Rifle Division. And we'll take this 358th and move them over here. All right, this is all going well. Fortifications were still all pretty dug in. This, this line has not moved since the beginning of the scenario, which is fine. Okay. So this is going very well. I'm very happy with all of this. You see we have all of these um, construction repair brigades. They're, they're starting to actually be effective because all of these rail lines here were damaged and inoperable, but now you can see already after a turn, these have been repaired as has this hex here. The, everything where I'm highlighting here with my mouse, everything here south of Rechev, it was all German-occupied territory until three, four turns ago. Um, so the, the men are hard at work to try to reestablish our rail lines of supply. And up here, you see we have another where they've been working down um, I think that line runs right from Moscow, actually, right down here to the Smolensk front. And now we get to kind of the northern Smolensk front, and this is the second area in which the Germans did a number of counterattacks. So first was right here. Our two rifle divisions were pushed back. Uh, each side lost a thousand men, twenty to thirty-three gun platforms, and it was a pretty heated tank battle, actually. Um, they had 158 armored fighting vehicles, we had 90. And if we look there at some of that detail, it looks like it was a combination of Martyr 2s, Panzer 3s, and Panzer 4s. Um, is that, that was some pretty serious fighting that happened there. They lost 47, we lost 60. And if we look at the ground combat, we see that really, look at this, right? The Martyr Twos were by far the most effective against us. They only had 14 of them, but they scored 14 AP hits. Um, and an AP hit from a Martyr Two on a T60 will likely mean the end of that vehicle. On a T34, I, I wouldn't say certainty, but again, it's, it's probably a pretty good sign that T34 is either going to be destroyed or damaged. Um, and you see this range, right? The range at which this was happening was much further out, so it was probably a bit of a, um, they, they came up in the rear of the main advance, and while the frontline forces were distracted, they kind of, from a distance, had their impact. The Panzer Force well, it's just this one that got in really close. Okay. 
I really, I need to look up um, for distance for range. And the same thing with defending range. If it's represented in yards and yards or meters, I, I'm not sure of the answer of that. And this was in heavy woods too, which is also a little interesting that they chose to have such a heavy armored fighting vehicle assault in heavy woods with snow on the ground and it's snowing. It's really just not, that's not ideal tank fighting uh, conditions. Moving on, uh, we actually held here when they attacked um, 36,000 men to 20,000 men. Each side lost about 200. We lost three armored fighting vehicles. They lost seven. And each side lost four gun in place, or four gun platforms. Here was again a mixture of Stugs and Panzers, and we lost some T-70s, it looks like. Then we had a, a two back-to-back -back losses over here, where we actually had these three rifle divisions all retreat. Um, and again, it was a pretty heated battle, right? 34,000 men against 26,000. Uh, they lost 18 gun platforms. We lost 86. They lost 18 armored fighting vehicles. We lost 46. Those are some, some big discrepancies there. And I'm betting what happened was a combination of supply situation, which we had been very worried and concerned about, as well as a um, fatigue situation, because a number of the units on this front line have carried higher fatigue. And when we look at this here, again, the bulk of the damage really coming from the Panzer threes, it looks like, and most of our losses were T-34s, not T-60s, which is honestly a little disappointing. I'd rather lose the light tanks than the mediums. Here, this rifle division was routed, and we had one rifle division retreat. We were outnumbered 2 to 1, 44,000 to 21,000. We lost 1,200 men, 34 gun platforms. We did take out five of their armored fighting vehicles, even though we had none ourselves. So that, that is a, a very small, very small solace that I'd have. Um considering the amount of men that we did lose in that battle, and that this unit here ended up being routed. So now we'll go back to the movement um, interaction with F1. Like we've been maintaining, we're not going to do anything along this stretch here. This just stays as the defense position. On the eastern flank is where we've had our most success and will likely continue to. I don't know that it makes sense in any of these hexes that they took to move back into them. I don't know what's to be gained if we do. And if you remember, what we'd actually done in the previous turn was, given how difficult the fatigue situation was with some of these units, all of these here, we had actually moved them back off the front line to try to help lower their fatigue. And it looks like it's working pretty effectively. So I, I think that's a pretty big success that we can draw upon. I think we will move this unit up here. And supply situation isn't terrible. A little worse with these two. I think we're going to take these five units, and we're just going to try to push back this one hex here. And we were successful in doing so. 70,000 men to 7,000, so I, I would hope that we did have some success. Fatigue level is a little high on these, about 50 for each, so we are going to leave them off that front there. And then here we have this rifle division. We're just going to move that back to this stack. Okay. So that's going well. Over here we have the 33rd Army in this rifle division that's in the rear. I think we'll probably just move it up a little closer to the front. And then we have a couple here that are on refit status. Was this one on refit? It was not on refit. Okay. Um, and, and look how I think we did this one turn ago. Two turns, maybe. Um, if you want to help the unit kind of reconstitute itself as quickly as possible, put it on an HQ unit. Have the HQ unit be on a rail line and preferably a junction like one of these cities. And then turn it to refit status. If you're manually managing your supply depots, it's even better than if it's on the depot. Um, but you see that their combat preparation is just shot up and their fatigue is next to nothing now. 
So the only other thing that we can really look at is to see how is their TOE. Looks like it's great. Look at this, right? They're, they're more than 100% on so many of those numbers. Um, so I think we can take this off refit, same with this unit. And maybe what we do is use this one to advance here, these two. And then I think we'll also take this rifle division was in kind of a similar situation. They didn't get their combat preparation as high as the others. That's okay. Is there a unit that makes maybe more sense to pull up there? I think we're also going to pull up the seventh guards. And now with these two, let's go ahead and push back each of these units. And we're going to do hasty attacks, which maybe that was a mistake. Okay, let's do a deliberate attack here. Don't have enough points to do so. Very well. You're going to make mistakes sometimes. you you got to accept that and be okay with it. Um, Northern Smolensk front here, probably going to leave it as is. Again, if we look at our um, supply alerts that we had, and if we scroll out a little here, right, we had gone down to 120 from 135. The bulk of them continue to be around Smolensk here. We actually had a very good improvement, in my mind, of this situation by the Caucasus region and the Stalingrad front. So our strategy down there seems to have been working. Um, but by Smolensk, we still face a number of difficulties. So with that, let's move just a little further down on the line. They've got some pretty reinforced units here like the 27th panzer that we're not gonna we're not gonna tango with that over here this is two motorized divisions but i don't think we're in any type of position there to attack and again fatigue on almost all these units is near 50 so we'll leave those as is we could advance down here here the fatigue isn't too bad on these but the combat preparation is pretty low Same thing. Well, no, this these units actually aren't in too bad of shape. I think what we'll do is we'll take these two rifle divisions, we'll move them up, and then we're going to look to see which is the strongest unit here. And I think it's going to be this third tank army that we're going to move up. Or excuse me, this 48th guard, which is a member of the third tank army. We're just going to move them up there. And here we had these three tank cores. Combat preparation is pretty low on all of those. We could look at moving up these units into this hex, but I don't think we're going to because the 23rd Panzer is pretty well reinforced and ready for a counterattack. And again, we have a hex disadvantage because we could be attacked via three hexes on three sides. Whereas this one was a little safer because it's just two units that'd be able to attack, or two hexes that'd be able to attack at one time in that concentration. Continuing along, we, we see more of our rail brigades continuing to, to do repairs on the railroads. That's great to see, it really is. Uh, this unit has lowered its fatigue to zero, so we're actually going to move it up on the front line. And I think we will, 32 is just really not that bad of fatigue, so I don't know that we're going to pull it back. Yeah, we're going to leave all of those just as they are. All right, so no more progress here. And this has been the story for a while in this section of the front, which is okay. I'm always a little tempted to try to take this crossroads here, um, Kirov. Uh, it doesn't do anything north because that's all our territory, but it does just kind of, it's the intersection of these two lines. Looking over here, continuing down along the front, they're just too strong, too well dug in, fortification levels all at three for the most part, so we're not going to do anything here. Again, we could certainly move this unit up into this hex, but why? 
what do we get? Slight woods, no infrastructure, doesn't change anything in terms of forcing them to reevaluate their defensive lines. The only thing it does is it puts one of our infantry divisions in a position where it can have a counterattack by this Latvian motorized brigade, an infantry division, the Jaeger division, and the 5th Panzer division. It doesn't make sense. So we're going to leave that just as it is. Down here, down here we're going to have some fun. I hope. <laughs> I certainly hope we will. Let's take this unit here. Oh my. Okay. So that completely exhausts the unit if we do that. Which then has a measurable impact on our fatigue. We're... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take just this one unit we're going to attack here. Okay, they held. Now we're going to take another. We're going to do the same thing. They held. Am I about to make another blunder here? Let's attack. I did. I made another blunder. Again. Okay. Okay. Let's take the six guard, move them over, and let's attack. Don't have enough to do so. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to come from the north then, since everything else just isn't going my way. I want, <laughs> I need to get down here to our route. And it doesn't look like we're going to have any luck there because they have an HQ unit already there. Defensive value of 120, that must be, that must be incorrect and just a, a lack of recon or something. There's no way. That would be insane. I think we will take the 60th Rifle Division and move them up just to kind of help protect the line here. We're not going to take the Construction Brigade. That'd be a little ridiculous. We're going to move you here. These two units. I think we'll move over here to then start coming down this way. And what we'll do is we'll slowly try to encircle our route. I, I really shouldn't have done this with this unit. I should have just... I should have pushed one of them to their fatigue limit, moved into this hex, and then seen if that reduced my movement cost to, to bring more in. Hindsight 2020, probably one of the disadvantages with that is if this truly is an accurate number of having a defensive value of 120, they probably would have had something here that's strong enough to counterattack. Here, this is just me being jinxed at the beginning of the episode for saying that it's just not worth the recon cost, right? It would be so helpful right now to know what is actually here. Um, and the last time that we had recon on this was on turn one, if you look at the tooltip, kind of towards the bottom, right above question mark unit, question mark unit, it says last recon on turn one. So really, that could be anything. Could be anything. Looking over here, we're not going to do anything with any of these units. We are going to move the HQ, though, to make sure this stack stays within range of the HQ. And then, let's look. Can we do anything here? Does that make sense? Do we get anything from doing that? The supply situation on these units is perfectly fine. What if we took this Cavalry Corps and we moved them up? Now what if we took these three and attacked? That's three to one. They retreated. Okay. I think that worked out well. Down here, we're probably going to leave these units just as they are. We have, again, Railroad Construction Brigade all the way up here on the front line. Look at that. That's dedication, if I've ever seen it. Um... I wonder if maybe we don't move in three chips to this hex and then leave this hex and this hex empty. I think we might do that. I think we might take... I need to get off railroad mode. I think we might take this rifle division. 
And then I think I'm going to take the 161st Rifle Division. And then we'll take the 74th Rifle Division. And we're going to have them kind of be this focal point here, right on this front line. And we're not going to move up these units, I don't think. We maybe have an opportunity to counterattack here, but the supply situation on that tank core is pretty low. So the question is, here, yeah, again, supply situation isn't bad. This Netherlands SS Infantry Regiment. We, we have beaten back this unit so many times. I think every single turn of the game, we have had a battle against this unit, if not at least half the turns. The question is, do we attack here or here? I'm leaning towards attacking here for the reason, well, two reasons. Uh, one, so we just, in a humane act of kindness, don't keep beating up on the Netherlands SS Infantry Regiment. And as a man of Dutch ancestry, I feel like that's also a little bit of my duty. Um, and here, I think the Steinbauer Aust Infantry Regiment, if we can push them back, I'm hoping that then forces these two divisions, specifically the 14th Motorized, to then say, oh, yeah, this is a bad situation. And if you look at it, they appear to have supply issues right now. And maybe then we can actually get them to withdraw these units simply by knocking this out and putting pressure on their front line. So let's do that. They're routed. Okay, so they're gone. They're not there anymore. Can we maybe take these two? It's just, I, I don't know that we gain anything. And we've pushed them back so many times, they've just come back. It's just a hex. We're, we're going to leave them be. Uh, this one we had loaded on train, so we're actually going to take it off. We're going to change to the 38th Army. I don't think I want it to be part of this city fort. Is it because I'm in the city? That might be why that's happening. Let's move you down here. All right, there we go. Everyone in HQ, yep. Everyone's in HQ, good, good, good. Look at this, we continue to repair these rail lines. That is good news. Down here... Yeah, I, I'm not seeing anything where we have some measurable advantage other than maybe here. 13 to 5. I don't know that we necessarily risk that. And over here, they are still pretty well dug in, which has been the situation. Perhaps we can, though take these three units and can we push these back it's two to one what if I'm wondering what if we move this here and then what if we just take this rifle brigade we move them here now what if we take all these units and now it's 25 to 9 let's do it they retreated Okay, and again, same kind of concept I'm going with here. Can we scare <laughs> away, if you will, these uh, three divisions, these stacks that are here, that again, have look like they have supply issues? Um, there might be an opportunity there. Do we have enough to move into this hex? Probably not anything that's worthwhile, especially since it appears they have more reinforcements in the rear here. Again, could move here, just puts us in a bad position, though, where we can be counterattacked by three divisions. The important part is they aren't there, which means we have interrupted this rail line, right? That was the achievement that we had, and that's what really matters there. Over here on this line, I think what we were trying to do was to actually break through in the previous turn to the Rasash um, hex. This is the air base here, and we're just one one hex away. Don't know that that's going to be a possibility. Looks like they've brought in some reinforcements now and we have some supply issues of our own. So we're probably going to leave that be. All the units are within the HQ range, so that's good. And then we get down here nearing Stalingrad. 
Um, and this was the pocket we left off on last time. I think we're going to continue on, though we're still good on time to do a few more turns. We'll, we'll get to about here probably, and then we'll cut off the episode. So right here, we really have made this push into their lines, and it doesn't look like they've come up with an answer to it. Because uh, you see they're kind of all over the board, and none of these units are terribly strong. I wonder if we don't use the advantages we have in um, our front line here. To say push back. We push back that unit. Does it put any undue pressure on this stack here? I don't know that it does. We take all six of these. That certainly is overwhelming odds. Pretty much these stacks have become so strong that they can take on any one of these hexes, I think. The question is, where do we focus our fire? That's what I'm thinking about. And I think... Hmm... I'm leaning towards focusing it on a south. And one of the reasons I say that is when we scroll out and again try to get a bigger picture view, right? Once we do capture Stalingrad, it is going to be critically important that this rail line and this rail line continue their advance towards um, our Caucasus forces, Rostov, Stalino. And I think we can better support that by advancing and making these units here feel like we have gotten in behind them, is kind of my thought on this. So then I wonder which of these units do we then attack? We take all of them 57 to 12. That might make sense. Let's do that. So they retreat it. Lost 1,600 men. And do we have enough still to do here? We do 30 to 4. Let's do that, too. So they retreat it. And then this stack, do we have enough to go here? 12 to 2? Nope, don't have enough. I think combat preparation to do that. So then, let's... What do we have back here? Yeah, so we have two rifle divisions there that are, they've worked themselves up, right? So let's move that rifle division there. That one goes there. Then we're going to take this unit. And we will also put it here. This unit can come down. I think we take all of these. I think we say, okay, it's two to one, let's try to push you back. They retreat it. Okay. Okay, yeah, I like this. I like this. So now we've actually... We've even kind of reformed the front here along this line, which I think is good. I think that's very good. I don't think it makes any sense at all to move this unit up here. We can probably just move them here, though, just to kind of keep this line established. Okay. So then, for the next turn, I think that puts us in a good position where, as these units create, continue this column advance on this rail line, I think it puts us in a good position where they have to sit there and go, how, how do we try to contain the situation? That's the question I want them asking themselves every turn when they're trying to calculate what to do. How do they contain the situation? And I think we're doing a really good job of this in the south, and I, and on the south of our front, and I think this is pretty historical as well, in that the Germans struggle with how to contain this front after the encirclement of the Sixth Army in Stalingrad and ultimately its loss is I think they started to face just those heavy weights of numbers and go, how can we contain the situation against such odds and such a steady advance? Um, whereas in the north, I think, for example, in Leningrad, 
uh, they're still very much in a fortified position where they, they know how to contain it. And I think this is evidenced by the fact that for the last two turns, there have not been German counterattacks on the Stalingrad front. All the German counterattacks have happened in our Leningrad pocket, and they've happened in our Smolensk pocket. Because I think they have a better comfort level to say we can allocate units to counterattack. But down here near Stalingrad, we're just trying to contain the situation where we don't find ourselves in a position to counterattack the enemy. I, I think that's the logic behind uh, what we're seeing from the Germans here. You know, one that I'm going to have as a bit of a go back here is just say, does it make sense to push back this unit here? This is a Romanian cavalry division. And that's 4 to point three. I think we're going to do that. And now they're routed. So then it's just one more unit that they have to work with next turn to try to, again, contain our advance. It hurt our supplies on these units. Yeah, I see that. But I think it's going to be okay. Fatigue went a little higher too. I don't think given this entire situation, they're going to counterattack with the 7th Flieger Division and the 68th Infantry Division. I don't see that happening next turn. So with that, I think we're going to call this particular episode to a close. As always, want to thank you for your time to giving the videos a watch. Um, if you feel uh, comfortable doing so, please give the series a like and a subscribe for the channel. Helps get the name of the game out there and helps introduce other folks who may be finding this game's scale and size daunting to step it into the approach we're taking where every turn we're introducing here and there new mechanics, new features to try to ease yourself into this gameplay. Um, and also, if you have any comments, feedback, or suggestions for the channel and the videos, or just, <laughs> hey, uh, you, you've got a big glaring opening here in this hex. Go take a look at it. If there's something you spotted that I keep missing, love to hear that type of stuff in the comments so then we can also circle back and remind our audience of, of how to catch those things. So with that, have yourselves a great day, Strategy Gamers, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.